I'm very pleased to welcome all of you here today. I would like to begin today by acknowledging that we're meeting on the traditional territories of the diverse Indigenous peoples and Inuit of Alberta, Yukon and Northwest Territories. We're grateful for the opportunity to meet here. We thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this land and recognize and deeply appreciate their historic connection to this place. Um, we have some special guests joining us tonight. We have our patron, the Honourable Salma Lakhani, and we have Robin um, McDonald, the chair of the National Girl Guide Board. I'm very pleased that our patron, Her Honour, the Honourable Salma Lakhani, is able to join us for our annual general meeting. Her Honour will now present, provide us with her greetings. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Commissioner Tracy Burton, and good evening and hello, everyone. It is my pleasure to join you for this virtual annual meeting to mark the completion of what has been a highly unusual period for the Girl Guides and indeed for all community organizations. The pandemic has demanded a great deal from people in every sector, including the amazing leaders, volunteers behind programs like Girl Guides. While necessary, restrictions have kept us all safe. I know that they have also brought challenges for you and for the girls and young women that you serve. As your honorary patron, it is my pleasure to recognize everyone who has helped to keep this invaluable program moving forward over the past year. Thank you for going the extra mile for creati creatively finding ways to safely meet in person when possible and becoming overnight Zoom and MSD teams experts when needed. Above all, thank you, thank you for being there for our girls. You have helped to bring a sense of connection and purpose to so many young people in our communities. And I'm sure that your efforts have made a world of difference to them and their families. In many ways, this extraordinary year has reinforced the importance of the ideals that sit at the heart of the Girl Guides. This program helps our young women to develop the confidence, resilience, and self-reliance they need to thrive through any challenge. Guiding also encourages girls and young women to look outward, to focus on teamwork, and to play a meaningful role in building a better world. In short, this program is dedicated to fostering strong, compassionate female leaders who, who fearlessly step forward to share the best of who they are. And on a personal note, I would like to say that whilst I never was part of the guiding movement, my mother was a, a very, very avid guide in Uganda where we lived. And she often used to tell me wonderful stories about her experiences and all the lessons that she had learned as a girl guide. And just this morning, I received this brochure in my mailbox. I don't know if you can see it, but it says, Hi, for plenty food drive and it is it's an initiative in my neighborhood by the girl guides so it is so heartwarming to see all our young girls and women engaging so wonderfully with the needs of community and this is the way we nurture future leaders so thank you for all that you do i would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to everyone who contributes to this essential goal, along with my congratulations to all those who are receiving awards today. I trust that the coming years will provide many opportunities for me to learn from you and your young members in my role as your proud honorary patron. I'm looking forward to meeting with you in person as soon as we're able, until then, Thank you for all your tireless work. Stay safe and keep well and keep up the good work and congratulations again to the awards recipients. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for those amazing thoughts. I think we have been very lucky this past year to provide so many virtual experiences and to keep guiding going. And I must say that I think you truly are a role model for all of us girls and women. We're so thankful that you could join us tonight. And I always say it's never too late to be a girl guide leader. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you so much. All right, maybe we'll just do our virtual applause. I don't know if you've seen this before. <laughs> We're giving you all our virtual applause. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. I am also very pleased that we have Robin McDonald, the chair of the National Board, able to join us for tonight's AGM. So Robin has served on the Board of Directors since June 2015, first as Director of Treasurer, and then serving as Chair of the Board of Directors since 2018. Robin began her guiding journey as a Brownian guide and currently works with the Area Camping Committee in the Fraser Valley in British Columbia. She has been a unit guider for 14 years, joining with her daughters as a Sparks Guider, continuing through each branch to Rangers. She particularly enjoys working with the Pathfinder Ranger branches, acquiring and teaching skills, empowering girls, fostering youth leadership, undertaking service in the community, and demonstrating to girls and younger branches what they have to look forward to in their senior years of the program. Robin is passionate about offering dynamic experiences to girls, recruiting and retaining members at the senior level, and promoting the link experience to foster the next generation of guiders. Obtaining her Certified General Accountant designation in 1995, Robin has used her accounting and financial background in various positions on District Council as Secretary, Treasurer, and Deputy Co-Commissioner. She has been a volunteer treasurer of many community societies, as well as controller and finance and accounting administrator for non-governmental organizations. Outside of guiding in her accounting practice, Robert, Robin is a concert and jazz musician and enjoys travel. So Robin, yeah, I believe you have some greetings for us from National. Thank you so much, Tracy. And I'm so honored to be here on behalf of the Board of Directors. As a member of the board, I'm excited to have an opportunity to be able to connect with you all tonight at your annual general meeting. It's hard to believe that it was only a year ago that provincial councils across the country pivoted quickly to host their first ever virtual AGMs. And here we are again, meeting virtually. And while we may not be together in the same room, we are still connected as Girl Guide members, connected as part of the global guiding sisterhood a sisterhood I am very proud to be part of, right alongside each of you. In Alberta, Northwest Territories and Yukon, the Guiding Sisterhood is a shining light, especially this past year. As you each reflect on the list of accomplishments and milestones, I'd like to highlight just a few. You updated the Camping Cuisine Cookbook, created a new provincial arts challenge. You have reached almost a 100% transition to unified banking. You've created meetings in a box. You've introduced a new Girl Assistant Award, held virtual commissioners trainings, and developed a partnership with the Secret 3K Run. This past year has been a challenge for all of us. And while it was the strength, resilience, and creativity, the guiding sisterhood that helped us along the way. With all that girls have gone through in 2020, Girl Guides has continued to put girls up front and in the center of all that we do. When in-person meetings were paused due to health restrictions, our members and volunteers offered new ways for girls to connect and lift each other up. They banded together to share creative programming ideas. They jumped into the guiding at home activities, organized virtual sleepovers, and invited women from exciting career fields to meet their units. For every Girl Guide meeting in every branch, guiding was a magical place to escape for a few hours every week. From Sparks excited to share a craft and to see their best friends, at a virtual meetup or two meters ac across at a park. Um, the Pathfinders and Rangers catching up to talk candidly about what's going on in their lives. Guiding was the glue. They kept everyone together during difficult times and a source to draw strength from when they needed it most in their lives. Guiding gave members something to look forward to and something they could control in a world that sometimes felt out of control. Guiding has been there for girls and women at a time when being connected really matters. This year has required agility and through it we've seen successes, but there have also been challenges. As an organization, 
We saw our registrations shrink significantly in the fall of 2020 and then slowly rise each week. Nearly 30,000 fewer girls did not experience Girl Guides, what they have to, what we all have to offer. And that impacted our finances and our ability to deliver on our mission and vision. We know that councils are looking ahead strategically about how to welcome back girls who took a break this year, or how to reach girls who haven't had a chance yet to discover guiding and continue the connections with those who did stay with us. Together, we are united in our goal of ensuring girls are not missing out all the guiding offers. Throughout 2020, GGC has not wavered in our commitment to equity, inclusion, and anti-racism. We have continued to strive to be a catalyst for girls empowering girls and to serve all girls in Canada equitably. We know this can only happen through action and a willingness to change, and not just a commitment in words. This is a commitment we must all make together as Girl Guide members. We are here to listen, to learn, and to enact change that will create a safe space for Black, Indigenous, and other racialized girls and women in guiding. And we can only do this with all of you taking the pledge and promise with us. It's clear just how strong guiding is when we work together. Our commitment to girl empowerment and girl connection resonates with parents and girls now more than ever. And we know members will return to guiding once COVID is over. We want to recognize and applaud Alberta Northwest Territories and Yukon guiders and council members for taking action, for being creative and putting girls at the center and in the lead and keeping guiding momentum moving forward for girls and for being present for one another. On behalf of the board of directors, I want to acknowledge each of you and the dedication you've put into the guiding this past year. Thank you for all that you have done this year to keep the guiding light burning bright. Thanks, Robin. I'll give you a virtual. <laughs> all right, so we're going to move into our more formal part of the meeting um, for actual meeting. Um, so before the constitution of the meeting is read, we will conduct a roll call of the voting members of Alberta Council. Please unmute your microphone to acknowledge your presence when your name is called. Deputy Provincial Commissioner Sheila Morrison. Present. Provincial Operational Team Lead Heather Monahan. Present. Girl Engagement Coordinator Bev Burton. Present. Present. Member Service Coordinator Shannon Hoffman. Present. Member Property Management Margaret Ukoff. Present. Risk and Compliance Coordinator Betty Slater. Present. Treasurer Pam Sigwaldison. Present. Youth Forum Co Coordinator Jackie Ahern. Present. Award Adventures Commissioner Sherry Graham. Present. Calgary Area Commissioner Michelle Harding. Present. Chinook Area Commissioner Tanya Prusik. Present. Cypress Hills Area Commissioner Stephanie Lindstead. Present. On behalf of the Edmonton Co-Commissioners, Marin Bolsler. Present. Parkland Area Commissioner Denise Cruz. Present. Peace River Area Commissioner Bev Lipon. Present. On behalf of the Prairie Rose Co-Commissioners, Lisa Penzo. Present. Tamarack Area Commissioner Patricia Wilson. Is that a present? Okay. Um, and then on behalf of the Wood Smoke Co-Commissioners, Diana Sabo Mansfield. Present. So Sheila Morrison, Deputy Provincial Commissioner, will recite the constitution of the meeting, bringing the meeting to order. In accordance with the Act of Incorporation and Bylaw 7.9 of Girl Guides of Canada, I hereby declare that this annual meeting be held for the transaction of all necessary business as required by said bylaw. Those voting on motions presented today are the voting members of Girl Guides of Canada Alberta Council, as identified in the roll call taken by the Provincial Commissioner. Members will be asked to identify if they oppose or abstain from each motion and resolution. So before we begin, with our resolutions. We're all gonna um, take our promise together. So I do ask everybody to keep their mics muted, but please join us in making our promise. I promise 
to do my best, to be true to myself, my beliefs, and Canada. I will take action for a better world and respect the guiding law. We are now going to take a moment of silence to remember our sisters and guiding who have passed in 2020. The minutes of the Girl Guides of Canada Alberta Council 2019 Annual Journal Meeting held May 2020 have been circulated. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? That the minutes of the 2019 Annual General Meeting of the Girl Guides of Canada Alberta Council held in 2020 having been circulated be taken as read and approved. Thank you, Bev. Do I have a seconder? Sherry, thank this you. This is Sherry Graham of Aurora Adventures area. I second. And by a show of hands, can we have all those in favor of this motion from our voting members? Okay. The motion is carried. I would now like to ask Pam to present the 2020 Treasurer's Report on behalf of Alberta Council. Thank you, Tracy. It's my pleasure to be with you all today to look back at 2020. It has been a year of challenge, but it's also been a year filled with huge accomplishments. We have learned what's essential equipment for meeting outdoors in October, November, and December in Alberta, Yukon, and Northwest Territory. Floodlights, hot paws, snowsuits, really good boots, but most important, enthusiastic girls. We know that when temperatures decline below minus 10, virtual might be better. And we also know our local communities much better than before as we headed out to explore what was just around the corner instead of hundreds of miles away. We learned how much we appreciated the Girls First platform, especially badges in a box when we had to search for activities to wow the girls. With the support of our trainers, we learned it's possible to hold a virtual campfire or camp and we found numerous activities that can be outside, done outside, socially distanced, or virtually. We learned that it is possible to hold a commissioner's workshop training remotely and reaching more members than ever before, not only from Alberta Council, but from across Canada. We managed to hold three cookie campaigns in a pandemic. This hasn't been easy, but it was wonderful to see drive through cookie events so well received and that our members were able to use their graphic design and videography skills to help promote sales. The campaign in March 2020 also saw cookies in the stores for the first time as our communities rose to the challenge to help support our members. And while we had to cancel many signature events within Alberta Council in 2020, just last month, we were able to hold our first virtual Alberta Girls Parliament, as well as multifaceted training to provide our, our leaders with tools as they move forward. On the financial front, over 95% of our units, districts, and trips have transitioned to unified banking. We had originally planned to hold as many in-person unit treasurers across Alberta Council, complemented with just a few planned webinars to ensure our members had the best information possible before taking on this huge undertaking. Thanks to being prepared, when our in-person sessions had to be canceled, all our training sessions became web-based and Alberta Council members were ready. This financial reporting transition was no small feat, given we have over 1,040 units and districts and approximately 80 upcoming trips or alternate experiences to account for. Back to bringing in our members trying to manage this while bank hours were restricted, or in many communities, banks were closed, 
Manufacturing facilities were unable to uh, produce deposit slips due to labor and material problems, and the postal service was disrupted, along with a myriad of other challenges due to COVID-19. But we accomplished it. While this was taking place, the Alberta Council and its areas moved to nationwide banking. With these tools in place, we will eventually be able to tell the story of guiding from the unit all the way to the national. With the introduction of purchase cards, guiders no longer need to utilize personal funds to pay for uh, supplies and activities. And in addition, unit treasurers welcome the ability for parents to pay for their cookies and other guiding costs contact free using direct deposit. We have accomplished all of this while conserving our financial resources as best we can. We wish to share with you at this time some unaudited 2020 financial results to demonstrate how our resources have been used. In 2020, we had 46% of our membership fee of our revenue came from membership fees. 24% is from cookie sales. Our investment income, grants, casino revenues, as well as donations and rent help support our operating activities. However, our memberships and cookie sales are key to our financial well-being. It is necessary to note that due to the pandemic, our event revenue, usually as large a component of our revenue as our cookie fundraising was insignificant. In 2020, our operating expenses, our expenses for 2020 reflected our efforts to minimize costs and our lack of camps and events to be, that were able to be held, weren't able to be held in person. Our governance and administration costs form a huge part of our operational costs this year, but we must remember that these reflect the costs needed to support members all across Alberta Council. This category includes not only the staffing costs for our Alberta-based team, but the costs for our membership support, programming, communications, financial, and IT support. It includes the costs to maintain our computer technology and applications, maintain our facilities, as well as the governance costs of Alberta Council and its many com uh, committees. The next largest allocation is girl assistance. This category includes our unit rental costs, which although significantly reduced, were required in order to secure park and community spaces for our girls to safely meet. Also included in Google support are Alberta Council scholarships totaling $12,000, which allowed our girls to become everything that they want to be. The balance of our costs reflect the routine wear and tear on our property and equipment, our adult membership costs, camps, events, and merchandising costs. In this picture, you will note there's a tiny sliver of color for our events and merchandise, but the amount is so small it actually registers as 0%. That's because we went virtually and minimized cost as best we can. In a typical year, our camps and events would have been as large a segment of the pie as that set aside for our girls support. Our expense allocation would have looked much differently than a typical year, but this was not a typical year. There is, however, one resource that accountants have not been able to establish a fair value for. It's the time and talents of our volunteers contribute to Alberta Council. This resource is truly beyond measure. So next time you see a guiding friend or a hardworking staff member, don't forget to extend a pat on the back for a job well done. We couldn't have done it without you. 
At this time, we would like to share a, a message from National outlining our financial report and goals moving forward. And this message was received April 16, 2021. As good financial stewards of Girl Guides of Canada, each year we review the provincial audited financial statement for Alberta Council as part of the business portion of our AGM. One of the outcomes of the nationwide financial management project is a single nationwide consolidated statement. Starting in 2021, provinces will no longer receive standalone provincial audited financial statements. Instead, provincial council reporting will be provided. 2021 will be the transition year for this work. Provincial councils will have draft nationwide financial statements available mid-May and final provincial council reporting for 2020 in June 2021. Ongoing monthly provincial accounting reporting is currently anticipated to start in June 2021, barring no further complications. The national finance team will continue to communicate updates to provincial commissioners and provincial treasurers on delays and progress. For 2022, provincial councils will receive unaudited provincial council reporting that will include balance sheets, statement of operations, and commentary for review. We acknowledge this is a change for our provincial council and for members that participate in our annual general meetings, and we are truly grateful for your support. We have confirmed there is no legal requirement for audited financial statements for provincial councils where none are prepared. We understand it is important from a governance and management perspective that members have timely and accurate reporting, and we appreciate your patience as draft nationwide financial statements are prepared for mid-May and Alberta Council Provincial Council reporting for 2020 is prepared for June 2021. If I return to my own comments, 2020 has reminded me of a bus trip to camp a few years ago. It started out with great enthusiasm and anticipation of what was to come. We had barely left the city when the bus driver took the off ramp to head east towards Saskatchewan. The camp lay west towards Jasper. Yes, we had to make a U-turn. The noise level on that bus didn't dis didn't diminish. It was just a short delay in the journey, but we've all been on those. Invariably, that dreaded question arises. Are we there yet? Not quite. But if we look down the road, over the big hill, round the bend, and over the train tracks, we will arrive at our destination. In closing, I would like to add a very personal note. I wouldn't have been able to fulfill this role without the tireless efforts of Girl Guides of Canada staff nationwide, including our team lead, Heather Monaghan, our executive assistant, Hazel Gillis. I also couldn't have done it without the members of Alberta Council and indeed all the guiding members in Alberta, Northwest Territories and the Yukon. Please accept my personal gratitude to all of you who have made my job a little easier this year. Thank you. Thank you, Pam, for that. That was wonderful. May I have a motion for the appointment of the treasurer for Alberta Council? I, Shannon Hoffman, member service coordinator, motion that Pam Sigvaldson be appointed treasurer of Alberta Council for the 2020-2021 guiding year for a term of one year. May I have someone second that motion, please? Michelle Harding, Calgary seconds. All those in favor, please show by a raise of hands. The motion is carried. May I have a motion to appoint the signing officers for Girl Guides of Canada, Alberta Council? This is Margaret. Let the signing officers for Girl Guides of Canada, Guide to Canada, Alberta Council be as follows. 
Provincial Commissioner, Deputy Provincial Commissioner, Provincial Treasurer, Provincial Operational Team Lead, and one other member of Alberta Council. May I have someone second that motion, please? Tanya Prusik, Chinook Area Commissioner. I second the, this motion made by Margaret. Can I have a show of hands for those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. I now have a motion to appoint the officers for Girl Guides of Canada, Alberta Council. This is Betty Slater. Um, I move that in accordance with bylaw number 7.9, the officers for Girl Guides of Canada, Alberta Council be as follows, provincial commissioner, deputy provincial commissioners, and the provincial treasurer. May I have someone second that motion, please? This is Stephanie Lindstead. I second. All those in favor? Motion is carried. We now have a treat for you. Our youth forum has put together an annual report journey of our last year in Girl Guides here. So we're very pleased and I'm very impressed with the work they've done on this. I got a sneak peek of it earlier today. So congratulations, girls. You guys did an awesome job. So Heather will hopefully our technology works and we're able to share it. <laughs> you may have heard about the journey guiding took this year through the pandemic. And today we would like to walk you down our guiding trail. We may have hit a few curves in the road, but with the determinations of our dedicated girls and guiders, we made this year special in its own way. And what a journey this trail has been, full of twists and turns from virtual campfires to doorstep guiding, it's been full of exciting action. We have any council to thank for a huge part of the fun adventures and opportunities we had this year. They went above and beyond planning activities for all ages and never gave up on guiding, even through a worldwide pandemic. As our 2020 year has rounded to a close, we would like to take a look back at the path we came from and appreciate all we did. Even with many experiences being done virtually, the sisterhood of guiding has carried through. A, bridge, a big bridge any council crossed this year is with online activities. They put so much work into making sure girls of all ages can actively participate in guiding no matter where they live. From camps like Link to the Future to online games on Instagram, any council is adapting to the new times. That sounds great. As we hike over this hill, why don't we take a closer look at some of the online camps that were planned this year? What a great idea. Why don't we take a break on our walk and eat some of our famous Girl Guide cookies? Even though selling them online was hard, we can all agree that they're an awesome snack and a worthwhile fundraiser. Okay, we should probably get moving. I hear all the areas have been up to some pretty cool stuff this year. Let's take a look and find out if we see them on our path. Wait, I think I see Calgary area up ahead. It looks like they have been up to some fun things this year, including a Thinking Day Fireworks Festival attended by almost 2,100 2, girls and guiders, and participation in the Secret 3K where $44,000 was raised for GGC. They also held a Winter Fun Day, STEM Day for Sparks and Brownies, and skating at the Olympic Plaza. When in-person meetings were no longer allowed, the Youth of Calgary Instagram team got creative with hosting badge and campfire-based virtual meetings every week for two months. It's been, an inc it's been incredible to see the hard work in creating things like contactless cookie selling and the Brownie Cap Academy that gained nationwide attention. Wow, those activities do sound fun. I think I can see Prairie Rose area up next. Why don't we take a look there too? It looks like they've kept busy with challenges like Valentine's for veterans and local seniors, various camps and activities, the Prairie Rose area winter challenge and thinking day events. Virtually, the area had many units participating in guest speakers, special events and virtual sleepovers, as well as several members working towards awards like the Canada Accord and Bronze, Silver and Gold Trailblazer Awards. It's amazing to see their participation in service projects like the local food bank collections, community cleanups, Remembrance Day services, and collection of winter clothes for clothing drives and women's shelters. What amazing ways to give back to the community. Guiding Shara has been busy this year. It feels like we haven't missed a beat. I think if we walk a bit further, we should be able to see the Chinook area. 
I hear they have been up to lots of cookie selling, coming up with lots of creative ways to sell both classic and mint cookies by in the, by including local vendors. They've had a big shift with switching to virtual meetings, but have continued to participate in many fun activities from a distance. This year has been a year of many changes for Chinook area, but they have high hopes for next year. It is so cool to see all the girls working hard on completing their badges and getting outside. Let's go check out what the Cypress Hills area has been up to. They've been busy rebooting guides on the air, where girls learn about Morse code, talk to each other on the radios, and even made contact with people in Texas and California. They held three winter frolic events in January and February, and sent craft package to 85 participants through their spring arts event. 166 participants in the Commissioner's Challenge helped reduce their environmental impact. Despite cold weather, they were able to host a costume parade for the residents of a local care center, an outdoor paint night, carve pumpkins, create holiday cards for the stuffed bear program, pack hampers for the local food bank, and had a cookie drive through among much more. Some units even went ca canoeing, snowshoeing, and night hiking. Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. I agree with you. And once we get around this hill, I think we should be able to see wood smoke area. With the help of some dedicated guiders, Wood Smoke Area was able to keep the fun of guiding alive as well. They met virtually and had game night sleepovers, baking competitions, and more. In person, they held games, nature activities, crafts, hikes, and campfires, and even got to have an area winter wonderland camp with skating, movies, and mud cakes. The area continues to stay connected and looks forward to more exciting guiding adventures. Once we get past the little forest ahead, Edmonton will be right in front of us. I think we should stop and take a quick peek at what they've been up to. One of my friends lives there and she said guiding for them has been very busy with activities like their annual World Thinking Day event, like the bridge. Hundreds of participants attended a walk and an evening of songs, games, and friends with the backdrop of the high level bridge lit up in bright guiding colors. A friendship camp was held for Pathfinders and Rangers, creating lasting friendships and memories. Units continued to meet virtually with many surprise porch drop-offs, talent shows, craft nights, sleepovers, and more. Compass skills, fire building, knife safety, and sledding were a few great ways to keep warm in person. Edmonton area offered many virtual events like Path to Medicine, How Does University Work, My Healthy Relationship, and Science Fundamentals this year. The Commissioner Challenge member challenged members to create random acts of kindness and saw participants make cards for seniors, letters to armed forces, neighborhood sidewalk shoveling, and various donations to those in need. My goodness, they like activities over there. Why don't we continue up and see the Aurora area? What have they been doing? It looks like they had some fun thinking day bridging community activities like glass blowing and saw plans for renovations and improvements to camp in the Yukon and Northwest Territories. Units took advantage of many outdoor spaces to hike, bike ride, and play in playgrounds and parks. They built fires, painted rocks, built shelters, made pom-pom shooters, bath bombs, and slime, and made holiday cards for seniors. They kept having fun while distanced with skits, fashion shows, and bone investigation. Brr, the last bit of the path has been pretty cold, so let's go south and see what the Peace River area has been up to. I heard they started off the year with camps for all ages, Thinking Day where many units did the WEGS Thinking Day Challenge, and a bridging day with local scout troops. They got creative while virtual with a truffle hunt, craft nights, and guiding care packages. Outdoor meetings brought new opportunities like walking dogs at the SPCA and lots of community scavenger hunts. Sounds like a lot of fun. My oh my, this is a long hike, but we're almost finished. Let's take a look at the Tamarack area. They have been up to some very cool stuff. Let's take a look. They've been up to lots of hiking, snow activities, and badge work at outdoor meetings and online. They found lots of new ways to keep girls engaged and to create unique memories with baking and cooking opportunities, virtual sleepovers, crafts, and games. They've continued to grow the sisterhood of guiding. A number of units in the Tamarack area have continued to work towards international trips in 2022 and can't wait for new adventures in the years to come. I think I can see the end of the path ahead, but why don't we take a look and see what activities Parkland has been up to this year. They held their annual training weekend called Try New Things. 
It offered a wide variety of themes and topics, new and old. Unable to do most camps and sleepovers, they had virtual tours and activities instead. During a more relaxed summer, local gardens gained a new life uh, this year. Outdoor meetings included parks, snowshoeing, campfires, skating, canoeing, and even horseback riding. The area also gained a new district with the splitting of their largest one. Virtual meetings called Parkland Party Time, a fantastic name, allowed adult members to connect online through various different themes. Finally, we finished our guiding trail that took us all over Alberta, the Northwest Territories, and Yukon. All the girls have been working hard to keep the magic of guiding going, and you can clearly see it on the smiling girls. What an incredible year full of perseverance, community, and fun. It really gave us the opportunity to see how strong the guiding community is and how we can make the most of any situation. Thank you so much for coming along on this hike down memory lane with us. All right. Well, I think that definitely deserves some applause. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. That was wonderful. <laughs> Hopefully you guys all got a chance to see the journey that Girl Guides and any council has had this past year. <laughs> so each member in attendance received an electronic copy of the Printed Alberta Council 2020 Annual Report. Copies of this report have been uploaded to our website as well. May I have a motion uh, for the 2020 annual report to be accepted as distributed. Yes, so I, Marin Bolsler, the Edmonton Area Co-Commissioner, motion that the printed 2020 annual report of Girl Guides of, Al of Canada, Alberta Council be accepted. May I have someone second that motion? This is Margaret, I second this motion. Thank you. All those in favor? Motion's carried. The annual general meeting gives us the opportunity to express our thanks publicly and officially to the many people who have contributed their time, talents, and assistance to the work of Girl Guides of Canada, Alberta Council. May I have a motion of thanks for our guiders. On behalf of Alberta Council, I would like to take a moment to thank all of our guiders for the countless hours you give to guiding through your involvement in our districts, units, and with the girls. The strength and wisdom you share with the girls will benefit not only the girls and our communities, but the Girl Guide movement as well. We appreciate the unselfish giving of your time and your family's time. These young women are the leaders of tomorrow, and you should be proud to have had a hand in their growth as they take their place within our communities. This past year has had many challenges, but you have risen to meet these challenges and provide amazing experiences for the girls. I would like to make a resolution of thanks to all the guiders in Alberta, Northwest Territories, and the Yukon for their dedication and enthusiasm for the guiding movement. You help all girls to be everything they want to be. May I have someone second that motion? Denise Cruz from Parkland area, I second this motion. All right, everyone emphatically in favor. <laughs> all right, the motion is carried. May I have a motion of thanks for our staff? This is Bev Lapon from Peace River area. On behalf of Girl Guides of Canada, Alberta Council, I would like to move a resolution of thanks to the Any Council office staff and other personnel under Alberta Council's jurisdiction. Our staff are superb, friendly, knowledgeable, professional, and supportive. They are often the public's first contact with guiding and therefore present a welcoming and helpful first impression. The staff have had many changes this past year, but have managed to carry on their duties diligently and with enthusiasm. Thank you. Do I have someone to second the motion? Lisa Pendle from Prairie Rose area seconds the motion. All in favor, please raise your hands. The motion is carried. Can I just confirm if Patricia has joined us for the meeting? Okay, so this one I'm going to get a family member to help me <laughs> support on this. 
So I make a motion that on behalf of Girl Guides of Canada, Gidu Canada, Alberta Council, I move a resolution of thanks to our families and friends of Council. We appreciate and thank you for the support and encouragement that you have given in sharing your family with Girl Guides of Canada, Gidu Canada. Your patient and patience and understanding of the many hours of commitment have made Girl Guides in Alberta, Northwest Territories and Yukon a strong force dedicated to making a difference with the leaders of tomorrow. Thank you for your support. Do I have someone to second that motion? I second that. Diana Sabo Mansfield, Wood Smoke Area Co Commissioner. Thank you. All in favor? Motion is carried. Each year, Alberta Council recognizes members from Council or who volunteer in one of the many Council supporting roles whose term has ended since our last annual general meeting or will be coming to an end. The following members' terms ended in 2020 or ending in 2021. International Advisor Melanie Murray, Tamarack Area Commissioner Patricia Wilson ending in June of this year, Youth Forum Co-Coordinator Amanda Farkash, and Member for Property Margaret Ukoff who is finishing tonight. May I have a motion of thanks for our retiring members please. This is Michelle Harding with Calgary Area. I move on behalf of Girl Guides of Canada, Alberta Council, I move a resolution of thanks to the retiring members of Council and its supporting committees. We are very fortunate to have dedicated and passionate members of Alberta Council and its supporting committees who are devoted to making sure that all of our members can be everything she wants to be. Your guiding journey takes you on a new path from Alberta Council and its supporting committees. We are extremely thankful that your journey brought us to our brought you to our table where guiding benefited from your ideas, experience and creativity. We sincerely thank you for all your hard work and passion to guiding in Alberta, Northwest Territories and Yukon and hope that your next adventure takes you even closer to being to everything you want to be. Thank you, Michelle. Do I have someone to second that motion? This is Betty Slater. I will second that motion. Thank you. All in favor? Motion is carried. Guiding in Alberta, Northwest Territories and Yukon would not be possible without the guidance and support we receive from the National Board of Directors and the national staff. May I have a motion of thanks? This is Stephanie Lindstead with Cypress Hills area. Then on behalf of Girl Guides of Canada, Guide du Canada, Alberta Council, I move a resolution of thanks to Girl Guides of Canada, Guide du Canada, National Board of Directors and staff. As our governing board, you provide vision and direction to our movement and ensure that Girl Guides remains the organization of choice for girls and women. You ensure that each girl can be everything she wants to be. Thank you. May I have someone second the motion? Ms. Shannon Hoffman, Member Service Coordinator. I second the motion. All in favor? Motion is carried. Guiding under Alberta Council's jurisdiction is truly fortunate to have extraordinary support from a significant number of communities, individuals, corporations and other entities. May I have a motion to thank these groups? I, Lisa Penzo from Prairie Rose area. Motion on behalf of the members of Alberta Council, I move a resolution of thanks to all the public support groups of Alberta, Northwest Territories and Yukon. I would like to express our organization's gratitude to all the individuals in our community, community associations and service groups who have supported our girls, guiders and units this year. I also want to acknowledge the corporations, religious organizations and government entities that have provided meeting space, financial support and in-kind donations that have made guiding possible. We recognize that your support of our organization is critical to our ability to fill the vision of a better world by girls. This is Bev Burton, Girl Engagement Coordinator. I second the motion. Thank you. All in favor? Motion is carried. You're all invited to attend the 2021 Girl Guides of Canada Alberta Council Annual General Meeting, um, which will be April 30th, 2022. Hopefully, we will be able to meet in person. <laughs> With no further business to be transaction or transacted, I will ask for a motion to join the Girl Guides of Canada Alberta Council 2020 Annual General Meeting. I would like to make a motion that the Girl Guides of Canada Alberta Council 
2020 annual meeting be adjourned. Thank you. And we do not need a motion for that. Okay. Or seconder, sorry. Um, all in favor? <laughs> so please don't leave. We still have lots more fun coming up. Um, so I want to start out with a big thank you to Council. This year, as mentioned, has been full of challenges and opportunities. I've been extremely fortunate to have an amazing team to work with. I want to thank Sheila for being a great deputy to work with and walk on this path together. Thank you to Heather and Hazel, the amazing council staff who've risen to many challenges that keep coming at them. I want to send a special thank you to each and every member of council for all the work you've done this past year and for the time that you give to guiding. We're now gonna move on to the really fun part of the meeting and we're gonna be doing presentations of awards. So on behalf of Sheila and myself, we would like to apologize if we pronounce anybody's names incorrectly. Um, and so if you, it's kind of like at the airport, if you think you hear your name, you probably will, but they will be on the presentation as we go along as well. Um, so as mentioned, the Girl Assistant Awards is an award initiative that was actually developed here in Alberta, um, Northwest Territories and Yukon. This award is new this year for Alberta Council and was designed to recognize the amazing work that our girl assistants are providing. I'm just going to read out the award recipients for this year. So we have Alina Guidis, Charlie Casado, Jessica Doby, Lacey McFarland, Katie Bergen, Megan Morris, Alyssa Cody, Samantha Bridal, Melanie Phillips, Emily Feets, and Paige Miller. I think they all deserve a round of <laughs> We're now going to move on to the Gold Thanks Awards. So for their amazing work with the blueprint, a Gold Thanks Award is going to both Sam Boys and Finley Rogers, who have helped to pivot our blueprint and to make sure that we keep everybody informed. So thank you. for the countless hours of work around the finances of Alberta Council, including I don't know how many hours of work related to trip financials. I am very pleased to present a Gold Thanks Award to Pam Sigvaldison. And if you're present, please feel free to say hello so we can see you on camera. For being the amazing lead of the Alberta Council Unified Financial Champions, for making sure that like 95% of us managed to move over in this past year, I want to give a gold thanks to Rose Ward. We know that getting awards is fun and creating awards probably is not as fun as <laughs> getting them, um, but we've had the two new awards this year. So the Girl Assistant Award and then actually the Ivy Award, which was just introduced at the end of last year. So for the work of creating the Girl Assistant Award, we would like to give a gold thanks to Ainley, Ainsley Zayak and Dana Wagner. And for the work in, to put in creating the Ivy Award, we'd like to give a gold thanks to Rosalind Schmidt and Jan McCachran. All right, and I'm gonna put it over to Sheila. It's my pleasure this evening to give out the team awards. After 48 years, Alberta Girls Parliament had to pivot to a virtual environment. The 49th annual AGP was held this year virtually. The team created an amazing experience for the young women who attended, having, including having caucus and debates on the team's environment. For all of the work that they did and for creating this great experience, the AGP team is awarded a team award, and they are Anne Eastman, Casey Fallis, Eddie Jubinville, Elam Iftikar, Julie Kitts, Ronit Schwabi, Shannon Jager, and Jessica Pandoni. So I think that was Vanessa. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Our second team award. From the start of Safe Guide over 12 years ago, there have been some assessors who have been part of the process ensuring safe and fun activities for our girls. For this, we have awarded the original Safe Guide assessors who are still working as assessors the team award. 
and they are Philippa Wagner, Henny Smith Nielsen, Betty Slater, Anna Robertson, Mark Ramsey, Juliana Rego, Pat McWilliams, Karen McDonald, Twyla Jenkins, Enid Isaac, Renee Hill, and Chris Hayden. And our final team award tonight, 2020 brought the change of moving all our units and districts over to Unified Financials. The team of the Unified Banking Champions and Treasurers had the daunting task of training and supporting our guiders in this transition. For these, they have been awarded the team award. The Unified Banking Champions and Treasurers are Kathy Batty, Rose Ward, Justin McGinnis, Lisa Franklin, Jen McEachran, Natasha Rainbow, Michelle Tremblay, Jamie Lowry, Heather Monahan, Taylor Shilnick, Carolyn Gutkowski, sorry, Gutkowski, Natasha Cran, Tracy Burton, Dana Wagner, Shailen Davis, Leslie Horton, Debbie Morgan, Wendy Rennenberg, Donnell Watson, Leah Bechter, Candice Tomlinson, Michelle Anderson, Tirza Wolf, Harvey Semrock, Gail Lenardis, Dana Bozer, Annette Janin, Dorothy Peartree, Susan Saracen, Diane Ford Botten, Carol Banks, Charlotte Zaretsky, Terry Lee Ondrick, Gwen Bitts, Bushra Ikram, Nancy Campbell, Roseanne Bowman, Cindy Lavalley, Marion Phillips, Jamie Allen, Jackie Hall Buckland, Christina Lothian, Melissa Poulin, Jacqueline Hearn, and Jennifer Hudson. Congratulations to all our team award winners tonight. Congratulations, ladies, and one gentleman in that group who was a treasurer, or a couple gentlemen. Congratulations. So the, for this next award, it's a bronze merit. The role of cookie advisor has exponentially grown this past year. Despite many challenges, we've been able to rely on our amazing cookie advisor, Tanya Morin, to face all of these challenges and have a smile on her face. I know I've relied on her heavily through these cookie um, challenges and through these last cookie campaigns. For all of your hard work with cookies, Tanya, congratulations on achieving your Bronze Merit Award. Our next award is a Medal of Merit. So Tamarack area has been very lucky to have an amazing commissioner at the helm this past year, especially as the area is celebrating 50 years. I want to congratulate Patricia Wilson for being awarded the Medal of Merit. We're now moving on to our Ivy Awards. Um, as this is a relatively new award for people, this is granted to um, our guiders who have done some amazing work over many years of guiding. And so it's never just one thing they've done. So learning about our past and from our past helps us to understand where we are now. We've been very fortunate in any council to have an amazing archives lead who has helped to create museum worthy archives. I'm extremely proud to present an Ivy Award to Janet Alcock. Any council has many diverse properties with unique challenges to each. We've been very fortunate to have had an expert guiding us through all of these challenges as they have come up. For all the work she has done in her position on property, as well as the countless hours she spends with the training committee, both at her area and province, I am very pleased to present an Ivy Award to Margaret Ukoff. Mm -hmm. 
And so finally, managing risk is not a task all members would want to take on. However, we are very fortunate to have Betty Slater in this role. As well as her provincial work, she continues to be very active in her district and continues as a safe guide assessor. I am very pleased to present the Ivy Award to Betty Slater. And then moving on to the Beaver Award. So this person is very deserving of the Beaver Award. She has served as a unit guider, has worked in her district, has been the provincial and national international advisor. She was instrumental in the national inter international trips. She's an advocate for travel and girl guides and broadening the world for our girls. She's currently our provincial awards advisor, which is why she didn't know about this. <laughs> I am very pleased to present the National Beaver Award to Henny Smith Nielsen. Maybe Henny, if you can unmute yourself and if you want to say a couple words and congratulations, Henny. Thank you so much. It's been an amazing journey so far. Thank you. Well, on behalf of Girl Guides, thank you, Henny. So I know that this hasn't been exactly the uh, AGM we were hoping for when we all met together virtually last year, but I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. 2020 has been a year of many challenges, and I feel that our amazing members of Alberta Northwest Territories and Yukon have risen to this challenge. We have had many unit, district, area, and provincial events still occur. We've had our commissioners training held virtually with commissioners from all over the country joining us. We had provincially designed weekly meetings occur in the spring of 2020 when COBA's first turned guiding to virtual, which kept our girls connected. We've continued to have our blueprint publication just move to a virtual format. We've seen many amazing stories of our girls and guiders doing awesome programming outdoors when we could be indoors and virtually. I want to thank all of you for helping to support great guiding to continue in Alberta, Northwest Territories and Yukon. I truly hope to be able to see you all in person next year, but at the very least, I hope to see you all in person next year. <laughs> um, and so I want to thank you all for joining us tonight, especially on what's turned out to be a beautiful day for many of us around um, our jurisdiction. I will ask that if all our former provincial commissioners can please stay on, we would like to do a picture <laughs> of all of us together, um, if you're willing to stay on. And otherwise, thank you everyone. Have a great night. Continue doing that amazing work that you guys are all doing right now. Congratulations again to all our award recipients. And please make sure you stay connected with your guiding sisterhood. This is what keeps us so separate from all other organizations out there. It's all of you ladies that are sitting out there and our amazing youth forum that are going to be joining us in the ranks very soon here. So thanks everyone. Have a great night. <laughs>